Hello, and welcome to another interview in the ACMW at CCI series celebrating Women's History Month. We're, we are talking with alumni and executives about their perspectives and exploring the UN International Women's theme of gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow. My name is Nadia Najjar. I'm a faculty member at the College of Computing Informatics and ACMW faculty advisor and a proud alumni. We are excited to welcome Angie Wesley, VP and Chief Global Talent Acquisition and Workforce Strategies for TIAA, a Fortune 100 financial services firm that serves over 5 million clients. Angie, welcome, and we are thrilled to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks. All right, Angie, thinking about the UN themes for uh, International Women's Day, um, gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow. What does gender equality mean for you personally? and your role as an executive, and how does it shape the way you think about the work that you do? Um, well, it's a great question. And obviously um, it's high on a lot of folks' minds this month, with, you know, being Women's History Month. Um, you know, when I think about equality, um, you know, I feel like I, I have a service and duty to help drive some equality within the, the space that I'm in. And frankly, just within women as a whole, you know, I've been fortunate enough through my career that I, I really don't feel like I've experienced that inequality, but I've watched it around me. Um, and so, you know, as a leader in the, in the financial services, it is really important to educate. It's really important for me to make sure that I am recognizing the bias, whether it's conscious or unconscious when it might be occurring. Um, and so I think I've become much more aware as I've gotten more senior in my role and I'm sensitive to, to the factor. Um, and so as, as I try to lead by example, um, I think that is the best way that we can help drive that change as well as hold people accountable. Um, sometimes there is a um, fear or fall around confrontation or addressing things such as this or even other topics that are sensitive in nature. And I think it's, we have to welcome the conversation. We have to lean into the conversation. We have to be courageous enough for the, for the women that might not have that airspace. Um, and so that is, that is really kind of what it means to me as I think about um, this month and just inequality as a whole. All right, so soon at the end of every semester, and we have students that will be entering the workforce and considering all types of organizations. What should our students look for in an employer around gender equality? And what would other IT leaders do to promote further equity? Um, so that's a great question because we know that summer is amongst us here in just a few months and we're gonna have lots of students graduating or lots of students getting internships for the summer. Um, you know, and what, what we try to stress the most here at, at TIAA, and, and I know this is a theme with other companies that, that value this topic and find it critical to drive change, is make sure that you can see yourself in that company. Make sure you see yourself. Like, it's, and as simple as it is, it's in interviews. So when you're interviewing, are you seeing other women? Are other women talking to you about the opportunity? If you don't see them, then ask the question, um, you know, what is your women population doing this job? What, what has been your success rate with women? What is the development opportunities in this space? And, and what is the success for women to be able to be developed and do, you know, additional learnings and furthering their education and career? Um, and, you know, I think if folks lean into that, they'll be surprised at the answers. Sometimes it won't be the answers they were hoping for. And I think that then gives them a choice they have to make um, about that employer. I, I think it then also allows for more curiosity from the, from the student or the female to dig a little bit more. Um, you know, we try to stress to our, our hiring managers and our leaders here, have a diverse panel, make sure they're seeing what we look like in real life, make sure that they're seeing a mix when you're sharing the job and asking questions, but it goes much further than that. Um, and so I think it's you know up to the, the student, the female to respect themselves and ask the questions before they start or before they you know further engage with employers. 
Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, right. Like oftentimes when we're going on an interview, we don't think that we need to be asking the questions or we have the, the, the capability of even asking these questions. Thank you so much. That's great advice. All right, so sustainability has been, of course, consistent topic and in many of the conversations we've had recently. And thinking about the second half of the theme, um, what does a sustainable tomorrow mean for you? And what action do you think we need to be taken personally or as an organization to get there? Um, well, I think, you know, all women, we, 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 we have um, a duty to help each other and support each other, um, not condemn each other, not cast judgment. All of us are in different places in our life, in our careers, whatever it might be. And so I think us propping each other up, that is how we're going to sustain, sustain or we're going to continue to kind of crack the foundation at its core. Um, when I think about what companies have to do, I mean, they have to be bold. They have to be ready to make a change, be the difference maker, so to speak, as we say at TIAA. I mean, in some cases, get out of their norm, you know, get a little uncomfortable. Um, and sometimes that is having courageous conversations with folks that they haven't had before. And that might be a female, that might be a student, that might be someone that's a female that actually holds a higher position than them and learning from them and asking questions. And then I think as females, we have to do the same in return. Um, you know, statistics tell the story where, you know, at least in my, my space, it's data driven. We know there's inequality. We know, you know, females make on average 30% less. Um, we know it's pervasive in some places and we know in other places it's not as bad. Um, and there are some, you know, headways being, being made with it. Um, but, it, you know, I like to give the example, my daughter's a sophomore in college um, and there's been conversations that I've had with her around, you know, being a female, being a white female um, and some of and the industry or, schooling she was going into was going to be heavily populated male. And it, I find it with that generation, almost diversity and this inequality doesn't exist for them in a lot of ways. Like they just don't see it. It's all, it's all equal. It's all fair, you know, and, and so that's refreshing that we've got that population that thinks about it like that. And we're seeing that shift of it doesn't matter make or color, gender or ability or whatever. Um, and so I'm hopeful with that generation that they can kind of continue to chip away and overcome some of these things that we have been stuck in for so long here. Um, but at the same time, I try to have help her understand the reality she's going to face. Um, and how do you then use your voice to address that? How do we then challenge companies to be different? So. I think it, it's going to be um, continue to be a long road. I love to see the continued momentum that this is getting globally. Um, and hopefully, you know, companies are starting to recognize that to be able to sustain our businesses, we have to make a change. And, and some of that is obviously around gender equality. Absolutely. I think one of the, for me personally, one of the probably the best advice I've ever heard or got is avoid comfort, right? So yeah. always, yeah. All right, so as we all know, the hard work begins at home. So how can the College of Computing and Informatics partner with the community and including your organization to achieve gender equality for a sustainable tomorrow? Well, um, first and foremost, you know, uh, UNC Charlotte is one of our top schools for our early talent. Um, it's one of our leading schools to where we bring interns um, and even our rotational, so coming into a rotational learning program after you graduate. So um, we are big fans of UNC Charlotte, obviously. Um, and we have got, we, we have lots of alumni within our company as well that are big advocates of, of UNC Charlotte. And I would say when you think about the, the school, um, it's, it's just putting it out there. Sometimes I think the, the school could wait for us potentially to make the outreach or come and say, hey, you know, let, let's talk about this or what do you need? Um, but I would say, you know, as I think about our program, I also want the schools that we have strong relationships with to tell us what they need. Like, come talk to the females, come talk to the students in general, give them that sense of what reality is going to be when you take that first job or you land, you know, day one in an internship around, you know, 
three, uh, 300 other interns or whatever it might be and 15,000 employees or, or whatever it might be. Like, let's give them some real world experience as well as reality scenarios that they might face and then talk to them how, about how to get uncomfortable to your point how to dialogue when there's difference. Um, you know, these are all kind of corporate terms, so to speak, but it really does mean, I mean, the same thing even for students. So we love to um, help provide that real world. We love to give some specifics on, you know, what might be needed or how they should think about it. Um, so I think it's two ways, but we love to hear from schools. Right. Well, we appreciate all the, the, the time that DIA you know, has spent, you know, with our students and on our campus. And um, I hear all the time from our students that they they found those these events very, very helpful in, in kind of developing their, you know, their career and getting on the right path. So we definitely appreciate that. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, Angie, to sit with us and have this conversation. We really appreciate it. Thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you all for having me.